Hey everyone, welcome as we bring you round two coverage of the second annual Ram Jam Classic at the University of Mobile. My name is JC Rowe and joining me is one of the code TDs and co-course designers, Josh Hollingsworth. How's hey. it going, man? Hey, doing good. Uh, so we're, this is the second round coverage, the lead card. Uh, we've got yourself, uh, Mr. Jeremy Harvey. Uh, Josh Castillo yep. and Caleb Huber joining us again as well. We'll go into a quick video from our sponsor. At the University of Mobile, Mobile is more than a place we know. It's where we are known. In a world where education often feels impersonal and disconnected, the University of Mobile is different. We go beyond the traditional classroom to build community in our community. Because Mobile is more than a place we know. It's where we are known. The University of Mobile. Experience the difference. Know and be known. Yes, the whole one definitely won't be a part of the new design, uh, but there's out of bounds everywhere. Uh, this is kind of a filler hole we put in short part three, avoid the limbs early, and you should be good to go with the hyzer shot moving in. Yeah, and so I'm returning here. A little, uh, a little juice to start the second round and I uh, push it deep out of bounds. More not, not for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> not how you want to start it here. So newcomer to the card, Jeremy Harvey, uh, strong player out of Pensacola, Florida area. You'll notice that everything in his game is about spin. He, he's really good at low tunnel shots, uh, pretty long spinny putts. And we've got Mr. Josh Castillo from here in Mobile, Alabama, forehand specialist, throws in a couple tomahawks. Fun fact, the slowest disc in his bag besides his putting putters is a monster. Yeah, I believe that's what he threw there, either that or a firebird. And uh, just unfortunately doesn't get the action in the air. Caleb coming in a, oh, a little oh, wow. strong, comes needed, over the curb. He needed to tap the A button a couple more times on that one. <laughs> So Josh fortunate to stay in bounds there, uh, pitches up for his par. Yeah, no shame in that layup. You get to come back from where you were last in bounds, looking at a three, the old circle three. Never understood why we circled those. Just, um, little little e card jitters there. Don't quite follow through and get it up into the chains. That may have been on the commentator you know even though it was played quite a while ago <laughs> circle four now <laughs> caleb with his uh 3p <laughs> yeah I how i've always written it in there um able to oh you were one of those oddballs yep. you? jeremy with the only two on the card um, and a two stroke swing to yeah. begin the round plenty of golf left to play yeah, it's definitely my mindset going in to the next hole. I mean, I've, fortunately, I've been able to uh, practice this, and Jeremy is playing it blind. So, Yes, yeah, so hole two, this is kind of the first hole that I'd like on this new course that we put in. Myself and co-course designer, co-tournament director, Logan Moore, shout out to him. 425 feet downhill, you got an early mando through the, to make you throw through this gap. Uh, this one's kind of a soft par four. It'll be about 500 feet in the new location and a definite par four, but yeah, get it moving through this gap downhill and uh, you could have a shot at an eagle. Yeah, picturesque tunnel shot. Uh, really just hit the gap. Mando shouldn't come into play. It's only there for safety reasons. As Jeremy kicks off way right over there in the 17's fairway. Yeah, and that's really why that Mando is there to protect 17, helping you play back in towards the parking lot. Um, again, we've got some work doing in this course and bringing me to that point as Josh throws a beautiful forehand and gets most of the way down the fairway. Y'all make sure to comment on the video and give some opinions on the course and the tournament on the day. Um, would love to hear those as we're, we're gonna be going in here pretty soon with the school and looking to draw up all these holes and make a full 18 hole course. Just, that's a leopard three from Caleb. Uh, just a little, he's used to just being able to punch that one straight, and he's been kind of pulling over on it. Do you feel really between a fairway driver and a distance driver here? I like, yeah, I like the flippy distance driver here. Unfortunately, mine was too flippy. Um, 
feel like I can just punch it and trust it to get to flat instead of really trying to have to overpower it to get it to go forward. Jeremy with a very spinny putter up shot into the green. Should be able to tap in a pretty easy birdie. All right, as you said, I mean, this is definitely a soft par four here. Uh, none of the guys in the card really had a good tee shot. And everybody's kind of going with a little jump putt up shot. I'm just giving a little spinny layup. Yeah, and with the soft par four, this actually was the easiest hole on the day on this course, uh, coming in at 0.77 strokes under par. Do we have any eagles? I don't know. We still have one person to putt. No, we don't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we actually do have one eagle on the day. Uh, that'd be TJ Van Dam coming in with the two. Shout out to him. And eight birdies on the day. So nine out of the 14 in the field scored a uh, birdie or better. That's what I get for looking down at my phone, <laughs> checking scores. <laughs> the rest of these guys cleaning up birdie. Move on to hole three. So hole three is a uphill hole. It's a uh, heck of a chunk. It says 320. I think it plays more like close to 375, 380. Um, this you got this straight shot, but I think the the play is to play hyzer out to the right, right-handed backhand hyzer, and getting moving in late towards the basket, maybe even a flex shot. You also have a really low ceiling late. This is a pretty tough hole. Yeah, with the low ceiling uphill, requires a good full power shot. Looks like Jeremy didn't have his angles going on just right there. Josh showing us another line. One thing that I really like on holes uh, after playing some John Houck design courses is giving multiple options to the basket. Um, so there's multiple, you know, different shot shapes you can throw in. You really just need to commit to your line and stick to it. Um, I also like this downhill and then uphill play, just given uh, contrasting views on back-to-back -back holes. I would agree. Caleb really putting a move on this out to the right side, trying to get to flex around those limbs and unfortunately catches them. Uh, so it'll be a really long look for birdie, most likely a layup there. And I'm trying to follow suit here. I believe this was a Falcor. Yeah. And uh, pull it a little right there. <laughs> Definitely got it wide enough. Uh, you're going to be looking at the basket through a pretty easy gap, I believe. Yeah, those limbs really scared me. <laughs> so, Jeremy, a little bit of work to do here. Excellent. Uh, and then uh, catches a stump getting into the green. I believe that was the grounding strap or something, wasn't it? Oh, okay. Or utility. <laughs> anyway, uh, Josh pitching up here. These, you know, these runs are maybe 50 feet, but with the with the hill, they make it really difficult to get the power uphill. Yeah, see, I'm fully extending out there and still don't give it enough to get it to the basket. Really got to spin this one. It's also tough to jump uphill. Yeah. Caleb leaving his a little short, which is understandable on that uphill. Jeremy with a lot of work to, to do here for his three. And just off the cage, short, victim to the hill. So he'll move one back. Yeah, and loses a little tighter. Loses a stroke to the card. Jeremy holding the umbrella, as you'll see later in the round, the weather starts to become a factor. It gets a little bit more and more windy. Just oh. something to keep an eye on. Right. It definitely looks sunny in the picture here, but yeah, it's definitely rolling in. That'll move us into hole four, par three, 275 feet downhill. Probably plays more like 225. Uh, most players are going to opt for an overstable mid or fairway, either on the backhand hyzer or forehand route. 
and just trying to pitch it up and keep it slow enough. Yeah, I feel like a, a slow disc with some late fade is really what you're playing for here is the, the ground can play pretty quick downhill. As Josh, as we mentioned earlier, throwing the fast disc, he gets it upside down and heck of a checkup. Yeah, from the tee box, we all thought that was going in, but we saw it was just a little short. It should be a routine chap, uh, tap in. Caleb liking the look of that forehand route. Looks like I think he's got a firebird in his hand. See if he can swing it wide enough. Looks good from the from the tee. A little bit of funky ground play coming in. Sometimes with those faster faster discs, if you get it digging on that uh, on the flight plate's edge, it can kind of get that counter spin. So I'm going distortion with the backhand route. Yeah, job all done. Just how I drew it up. Don't you love when a plan comes together? <laughs> so two forehands, two backhands on that one. That's what you'd like to see out of as a course designer. Yeah, uh, Jeremy doesn't actually throw many backhands. Ask him for it to sit down and catches the magnolia, putting them about 40 oh, short. Many forehands. Yeah. Correct. That's what I said. <laughs> Giving a nice bid, but just, just a little short, a little timid on the downhill putt. Yeah, I feel like it makes you a little uneasy. You just put it uphill, and now you're putting back downhill. Okay, you're putting flat, actually. He's come up with a lot of chains on several putts today. And just haven't hasn't exactly got it to fall fall home. And he's also been hitting a bunch of solid putts from outside the circle. So yes. just never know what you're going to get with him this uh, tournament. Would you say he's a box of chocolates on the putting game? <laughs> Josh with a cl uh, clean birdie putt there, making easy work of this hole. Jeremy coming back for his three. See if he can spin one in. I really love his putt. One. It's just that super spin, flat the whole way. Like even on the last hole when he was putting 50 foot uphill, it was just a nice pop of the wrist. Not sure what he putts with, but definitely uh, noted that he's sponsored by Lone Star Disc. So I'm able to hit the nice 20 footer for my two. Caleb. Style points on the par putt there. And that'll move us into hole five. 350 feet. Hit the gap on a hyzer line, pushing it just inside of this magnolia that you see almost center uh, screen. You actually kind of want the disc to fall backwards off the out of the air, like a stall shot. And uh, best you're probably gonna get on this is 30 foot deep. Yeah, this one's a, a pretty tough one. Um, Josh, as we mentioned earlier, forehand and tomahawk specialist, he actually does not throw any backhands. Coming through with a forehand roller and going a little deep, but he should have a view of the basket. Right, it being pretty open after you get around uh, making the the correct miss, hanging it out wide. I've got a D1 here. I'm going a little flippier, just trying to flip it up to flat and just get it fall left. That way I can keep it nose up and still get the distance. Right. Yeah, I feel like if you throw a really overstable disc, you're really going to contend with that magnolia and you're not getting through that magnolia. So throwing kind of a more flippy disc and getting it to flip up the whole way as it's moving towards the basket, I feel like it's the shot. Caleb following suit there with a nice destroyer shot. Jeremy looked like he got it on Heiser, but a little wide. And he didn't like it. Looks like it did catch some of the magnolia limbs. Should be a routine up and down, maybe a, a long bid. 
Josh, a, a little bit of work to do here. He's pretty good with those forehands. He checks it into the green. I mean, with a long bid. Just a little two nose up on that and definitely didn't want to push it too long. Caleb got to the green. I feel like that's a pretty good job on this hole. It's, it's pretty difficult to get down here and give yourself a look. And just a, also a little timid on the putt. Just didn't quite follow through. It's actually wound up being the fourth hardest hole on the day coming in at point zero eight over par. I can see that it's it's you know your best look is gonna be about thirty feet. And there is one of two birdies on the day out of your fourteen person field coming from Mr. JC Rowe. The other one to Mac Givens. Shout out to Mac. Y'all go check him out in the uh Original course coverage, round one. So Josh did a good job to get himself up here for a, a par look. Ah, uh, just a little short, that, that happens. He, uh, he gave himself a, a good bit of ground he had to cover with his upshot and just didn't get it inside of his comfort range. And that Chris four, uh, lack of concentration, maybe. Yeah, maybe just the, the fact the last one was short, he said, I'm gonna put more power on this one and just lifted it a little too much. Definitely frustrated and understandably so. You don't want a five on this one or any other hole on this course. So uh, that'll move him a couple strokes back, but he's definitely not out of things. And with that, I actually gained the lead again on this card. So we got a battle, guys. Uh, moves us into hole six, 300 feet. It's kind of a pick your poison. You can either go straight at it, flex forehand, forehand left, wide hyzer. Uh, you really just want to get it into this opening here, however you want to do it with a nice speed control and don't push too far away from the basket. Yeah, I feel like you want to avoid this magnolia on the right and check it into the green with some speed control because that green can get really fast on the backside. I had just a little too much hazard there. Uh, weedies are wearing off. I didn't quite you know, get enough on it. You didn't pack some to go? <sighs> Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake for sure. It looks like he's, I think he's throwing some kind of firebird here. Don't That's his halo destroyer there, okay. going don't, way wide. Going way wide. Didn't see that route when I was uh, looking up this hole with Logan. But hey, he got onto the green. He probably had a weedy in his pocket. He popped right before that shot. <laughs> Jeremy, I think, is going to go a similar route. Uh, actually, a little more inside of what Caleb did. Plays a good flex shot. Pushes it a little long, but... Yeah, it looks circle's pretty, edge. I looked pretty overstable. Uh, got back to edge pretty quick. That might be a uh, what is it, Chuka, chupacabra? Yeah, <laughs> they're overstable fairway. Yep. I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> Just... That that is what that is. I, I'm not sure if that's that disc, but that is what that is in their lineup. <laughs> Josh trying to play the flex forehand down the middle and just not quite getting over and enough. Uh, so he and I will have similar looks. He's gonna chip a forehand into the green. Looks like he's done so well. This is a pretty risky bid out of you if you want a piece of it. Put it up high just to get it trying to fall in, but yeah, as you said, it, it's a little intimidating. That's a pretty pretty good little bid though. Keep the nose up and make sure it checks on the green. Jeremy with that spin putt drives it home. And ties it up. Then we got Caleb with his birdie opportunity as well. Great putt out of Caleb. <laughs> Let's 
So Caleb's determined now that left side is the pro side for him today. You know, with these T2s, they do catch a lot of hyzers on the left side. I feel like they push out hyzer on the right side. Sorry for you lefties, I'm talking right hand, backhand hyzer. <laughs> So Josh and I will clean up our pars while Jeremy and Caleb take the twos. Yeah, we'll move on to the island hole seven. Yeah, so as I mentioned, this is an island hole, 375 feet. I believe the island uh, is 82 feet in diameter, so even outside of circle two. You can lay up into any of this grass that you see here, but any shots that do land out of bounds off the tee, you advance to the short tee. Any shots out of bounds from there, you advance to that uh, drop zone that you just passed. Uh, definitely a, a gettable par three, but a demanding shot. Yeah, risk reward for sure. Caleb swinging it out wide, hitting the power line, skipping off the road, and checking it onto the green just as he drew it up. Very electrifying shot from him. Out of the man that works for Alabama Power. Yeah, it's like uh, you know, talking to trees, he talks to power poles. Jeremy going with a more conventional route there, just hanging a hyzer out wide. Skipping off the road and onto the green. That curve can get uh, pretty hairy, it's pretty high. But it looks like he's got a putt, he's on the green. I was saying that uh, that Caleb got some luck off the power pole because he had just gotten hit in the foot by a MA2 throw. A oh, right. Spot. I do remember that now. <laughs> you trying to go wide like Caleb, maybe even playing it off the pole? Uh, just a little too far inside. And a little short there. Uh, I, from the tee, I thought it wasn't going to make it onto the island, but fortunate to find the distance there. You were hoping for the counter spin off the pole. Right, yeah. yeah. I just didn't miss the pole altogether. So. so Josh going with the forehand play. It looks like he's laying up into the grass. Not a bad play. I mean, a lot of folks are going to get par on this hole, even if you do get to the island green. It's, you can still have a very long look, so... Yeah, he told me on the tee that he has no way to really attack this hole, so he's definitely playing it for par. Tomahawk upshot, man after my own heart. <laughs> We're calling trick shots at this point since Caleb had one off the tee. And made the island green, but just pulled it a little right. That was uh, that in-between distance of, do I want to jump putt this? Do I want to just spin it in? Jeremy, with a little bit of spin, missed right and short. He'll be kicking himself for that one. That'll leave y'all tied at 13 under. It's also deceiving that, uh, that our lie was actually a slightly uphill. It looks pretty flat, but... How'd you like the island hole overall? I thought it was a pretty good hole. It's unfortunate that this won't be a part of the permanent layout with yeah. that, uh, the parking and everything around it. Yeah, it brings too much traffic into play, but it was definitely fun for the tournament. Could be a temporary hole in future tournaments for sure. Yeah. And uh, Caleb finally able to clean up his own, uh, the only birdie of the card. Uh, what heck of a shot from him. Move on to hole eight. Hole eight, 245 feet, blind hyzer from behind the building over the parking lot. You really want to go inside of this light pole, but outside is fine just to give you a look downhill at the basket. You uh, probably you're going to throw an overstable mid or fairway. Yeah, also to note, these little ditches that run throughout the hole are play casual. The parking lot is the only OB. So I'm thinking this will probably be the turn where when we put in the new course, this will kind of be where you come out of the woods. I don't know if we'll play this hole exactly, but this is kind of the area where you turn to go back. So you're gonna be playing a really high shot. You may climb all the way down the hill, looking back at the basket. 
Yeah, there's definitely a, uh, going back to the permanent course design. There's a lot of land out here in the woods that uh, could potentially make a great disc golf course. Yeah. Fun fact: University actually owns the most land of any university east of the Mississippi River. Interesting. So I hang a distortion a little high and wide there. I was definitely interested to see how Josh was going to play this hole. It looks like he's trying to really flex over on a, uh, a Firebird or Monster there. Yeah, it's tough with that forehand shot, especially when you're playing such an overstable disc. It wants to come out and, yeah, he's going to be long in the basket. You really got to get that shot to the ground and, you know, cut it over. It's just a touchy shot because, you know, the opposite, you cut roll, you could be out of bounds. Yeah, and he pushes it so far into the woods that he doesn't have a look around, but throws a very nice tomahawk through the woods and almost rings it up. Yeah, just slinging a dart onto the green. Seen you do that a time or two? Yeah. Downhill look at you. What are you thinking right here? Make the putt. <laughs> simple enough. <laughs> I'm a simple man. <laughs> For all you folks at home, that's the only thought that needs to cross your head. <laughs> all smiles out of James Christopher. As Jeremy lines up his putt, I'm getting out of the way of the camera. Very confused on what's going on. And Jeremy spins one home. He said her. And you looked at me, and I was like, Oh no no no! I was pointing him like he said it. I thought you were pointing at the camera also to say, "Don't get in the way of that." <laughs> I'm glad y'all are really worried about disc golf here. <laughs> I was hoping the, the conversation would work, Caleb. <laughs> I've always heard from folks, though, you don't want to be concentrating on disc golf the whole time because you're mentally working for three hours at that point. you got to find some way to stay in the zone but kind of, you know, give yourself a little chance to relax. Right, and Caleb finds himself in the basket there, left side, pro side. Strong side. Josh, unfortunately, with a long par there, but able to get a nice par save from where his drive landed. And that brings us into the final hole of our front nine. Hole nine, par three, 250 feet. Shot runs through a freshly manicured magnolia uh, path into this area that is, I believe, the archaeology. Geology. Geology. Yeah. Yeah, no, no fossils that I know of. <laughs> just, just rocks. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you really just want to punch it through, dead straight shot, and uh, give yourself a look. Yeah, these. Uh, it's kind of tricky on this hole. You, you want to clear the um, the railroad ties, otherwise you could give a, a downhill look that's longer than you want. Jeremy's going to be flirting with them. We'll see if he can get back over them. And out drives the basket by a little bit. Great shot out of Jeremy. When I was putting this hole in a couple of days prior to the event, security had stopped and uh, warned me of a couple of black bears that they had saw on this hole in this area. School's got tons of wildlife as you just hop over the railroad tie like it's nothing. Pretty wild. I think that's that pro backspin. Yeah. It was calculated for sure. I was playing exactly like that, hit off the magnolia leaf. Off the railroad tie, right under the so basket. Good. So good. <laughs> Josh, still not quite getting over on those flexes, but getting himself a look for sure. Caleb with a little bit of a longer look than he wanted, but that just makes the putt that much more sexy. Jumps over <laughs> to the limb, uh, excuse me, the lip and in. <laughs> yeah, as the whole card says, they uh, they thought that was a miss and. Yeah, I was walking with y'all at that point, too, and it looked like it was out 99.9% .9 of the flight. Josh, unfortunately, not able to get the same love off the nub there. Jeremy brings it back, which puts a little bit of pressure on you to drive one home and match him. Are you, really, are you thinking about match play at this point, or are you just playing your game? Uh, I don't really look at the scores until probably about hole 16. Uh, I know, especially with a course like this, there's not really a, any risk-reward shots where, I, like the island hole, for instance, where 
uh, might need to lay up in a certain situation or not. So Yeah, so that rounds us out on our front nine. We've got two tied at 15 under par, Caleb at 14, and Josh dragging, uh, dragging behind a little at 10. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors, the University of Mobile, MADGA, the prime suspects for all these temporary baskets you're seeing on this coverage, University of Mobile Store, University of Mobile Alumni Association, Chicken District, Donnie Wayne Butler Jr., and Cottage Hill uh, Baptist Church College Ministry. Thanks, guys. Check in with us soon for the Back Nine coverage. And don't forget to like and subscribe.